Um, the topic of my presentation is the individualization of personal injury compensation in Italy. How we finally assess it for the matter of jumble, because I was not talking about best work that may be used in this case. Um, when I proposed uh, the topic of the presentation, uh, we actually in Italy were in a point uh, where maybe some, something was going to change. But that in Italy there is always a but. Um, but my, my question is that I'm a uh, system efficient in fixing problems related to the individualization of personal injuries compensation. And in this moment, the short answer is absolutely not. Because as I told you, we were in a moment in which something was maybe going to change, but it, did, it didn't happen. So uh, I'm going to give you a short presentation of how the Italian system works uh, related to the compensation of um, especially non-patrimonial damages, and then tell you the problems we are having with charts. That is to say, with a system providing rules, fixed rules, uh, for every case in which a compensation is needed. Um, first of all, uh, why I was talking about a model of a jumble. Um, the compensation of uh, personal injuries in the Italian uh, system is afflicted, actually afflicted, by three negative factors. The first one is the lack of shared standards rules applicable to every case of personal damages. We do not have, in this moment by now, um, shared standards rules. As we will see, um, every tribunal may have their own standard rules, or worse, every judge can have their own standard rules. As therefore, the calculation of damages uh, is made using different criteria that may depend on the amplitude of a personal injury and on the cause. So depending from the cause of injury, you may have a different value in the compensation. And then we have this problem uh, that is not often faced by the Italian system is that uh, for historical reason, we are absolutely afraid of judges to be um, limited in their freedom. Therefore, in Italy, judges are absolutely free to judge as they like, and they are only subject to law. That means that even if the Court of Cassation or even the United Section of the Court of Cassation had something, state that the assessment of, the, in this case, the, the compensation should be made in a certain way, the ambulance judge in the uh, smaller town can judge in a different way. So you see, that makes things more complicated because they're always free to, unless there is a law providing a certain rule, they're always free to judge as they like. Um, uh, we, uh, what are the starting points of our civil code to assess damages? Uh, Italian civil code is a sort of a copy of the French civil code with some adjustments made because we were at a certain point, uh, um, we may say, um, there was an influence of the German uh, civil code uh, on uh, Italian scholars. Uh, the starting point for the compensation of um, economic damages is Article 2043. Uh, this article only provides for the compensation of economic damages. And actually, for a long time, in cases of personal bodily injuries, only the economic damages arising from those uh, personal injuries were compensated. Therefore, only the loss of earnings uh, or only the payment of uh, the cost for uh, medical uh, treatments. There is, in truth, another article in uh, civil code, which is Article two, 2059. This article provides for no patrimonial damages. 
But since the um, this article provides that they will be only awarded in cases provided by law, the traditional interpretation was that this article was meant to compensate um, moral damages only where the damage was the consequence of a crime. Somebody tried to kill you and uh, as a consequence you had uh, personal injuries or a law specifically provided for that case. So for a very long time in Italy, uh, only those kinds of non-economic um, damages were compensated in only those limited cases. But starting from the 70s, uh, um, scholars and case law and judges started to think that maybe uh, the application of that rule was too limited. And they started to think that there was a right to a compensation of no patrimonial damages, also where there was a bodily harm or a mental suffering that was a violation of Article 32 of the Thailand Constitution which provides that nobody uh, can uh, be subjected to um, harm, bodily harm, or uh, also to decision about the health that uh, they do not share. So um, judges and scholars together started to think that in itself, the harm to the body, the harm to the physical integrity was being protected by the constitution was a harm that could be compensated. And this right was recognized uh, uh, by the Court of Cassation and then by the Constitutional Court in 1983. Um, in a third phase, our scholars started thinking about these personal damages, and they started thinking that um, maybe there were other cases where the harm to the bodily integrity could be a, a compensable harm compensable damages. There was the case of what we call dan resistenziale, that may be translated into existential harm, that consists in any damage originating from the worsening of an individual everyday life patterns and condition that does not affect uh, his psychophysical conditions. That is to say, uh, you are harmed in your bodily integrity and then you're compensated for your biological harm. But then, because you, you cannot anymore go to play tennis or dance with your wife or take care of, uh, follow or run after your kids, you are going to have a, a damage affecting your everyday life, what you like to do. And uh, that harm is considered to be um, a compensable harm as well, because it, it interferes with your um, existence, your life. Um, what happened is that this multiplication of different compensable damages, uh, existential damages, um, physical damages, and uh, moral damages, caused uh, a large confusion in courts and scholars as well. So uh, that uh, in many cases, uh, uh, there was uh, not an agreement, an agreement on how to compensate those damages, with also many cases of overcompensation, because they compensated uh, economic damages, then they started to compensate physical damages, and then, then existential damages, and moral damage on top of them. And so at a certain point, the court di Cassazione tried to clear these problems and say that it states uh, three things, uh, that those damages could be, all of them, first of all, were non-patrimonial, non-economic damages. So the, 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 um, they were put in a box, non-economic damages. Then they could be compensated only when the wrong was in abstract a crime, the old rule of 2059. Uh, there was a provision, or there is a provision of a law that explicitly allows compensation for non pecuniary damage. For example, in Italy, we have some law uh, for the compensation of uh, damages caused by terrorist attacks. 
or now we have uh, we will see a code uh, insurance code providing compensation for uh, damages uh, caused by uh, vehicles uh, accidents or in cases where the wrong is a serious infringement on the inviolable rights of the person which are protected by the constitution so if there is a wrong to the freedom of a person or to the body integrity in those cases as well it may, may, may be compensated as non-economic damages. Um, but in most cases, to uh, have these damages compensated, the rule of 2043 applies, which is to say that the, uh, the injury must, must be unlawful, contrary to the law. You must prove that there is a causal link between the culpable conduct and the injury, and you must prove the damage. So the rules for proving the non-economic damages are the same used to prove the economic damages. And then the third point is that the court of Cassazione said that all those non-economic damages must be put in the same basket. There are only one head of compensation to avoid the overcompensation that I mentioned before. Um, what happened uh, regarding how much we compensate? Lacking any um, charts enacted by the Italian legislature, each tribunal started to create their own charts. So we had not every tribunal, but many of the larger tribunals started to create their own charts. And those charts were used by uh, smaller tribunals or other tribunals. The rules were different uh, with some common points. Uh, use of the severity of the injuries and the age of a victim as starting parameters for calculation. Compensation of moral damages with a sum from one third to one half of the amount of the liquidated biological damages. And freedom to personalize biological damages with an augmentation of the compensation up to 30% of the standard values, depending from a victim condition. So you see, we were talking about a one single head of damages, and here we have again a multiplication of the head of damages, because we're, we're talking uh, in separately of moral damages and biological damages. Um, so these local charts, um running the time uh, two local charts emerge as leading one uh, it's common in italy to have this battle this competition between torino uh, between sorry <laughs> torino is not, not existent between milano and um, and rome the economic capital and the moral capital or the political capital is better uh, so uh, the two, two emerging uh, charts were those of uh, Milano and Rome. The problem was that the charts were similar, but not, not the same. So the outcome of the same damages calculated with one chart or the other were different. As a consequence, it was they were unequal and not uh, correct under our point of view of equal treatments of the same cases. So what happened was that the Court of Cassation, the first time in uh, 2011, said that the, the, the chart used by the Milan Tribunal should be used by every Italian tribunal. But as I told you before, judges are free to do whatever they want in that. And moreover, the judges in Rome, they didn't like to apply the, the chart from Milano. So they keep on using the the charge from from uh, from Rome in in the tribunal of Rome, but also in other tribunals. So again, after twelve years in twenty uh, last year, the uh, the, <coughs> the court of cassation hoped again that the one to be used should be the one of Milano, but nothing changed. Um. So. What? what? Is it working? Okay. Um, but say we had a legislative effort 
to try to um, elaborate, to create charts equal for uh, everyone, at least in some sector. And in 2005, the private insurance code was enacted. And uh, it was enacted having um, with reference uh, the circulation of vehicles, the damages arising out of the circulation of vehicles. Um, it provided common, it tried to provide common rules on the compensation of bodily injuries in these cases. Uh, a few years later, it was also um, by all, all again by a law. Uh, it was also its application was enlarged to uh, cases of uh, damages consequent to medical negligence. And um, for our interest, uh, we uh, need to look after two articles. The first one is Article uh, 139, which provides the rules to be applied to calculate the amount of the compensation for bodily injuries in cases of permanent damages lower than 9% of a bodily injury. So, in this case, the rule directly provides the, 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 um, the, the, the article directly provides the rule to be applied to those cases. How much for each point, how much for the age, and then also provides that the amount of the compensation can be increased up to 20% for existential damages and moral damages altogether. So in cases of uh, damages arising from the circulation of vehicles and medical negligence, we have a rule, L lower than 9%, we have a rule, which can also be applied to other cases, injuries, uh, working injuries uh, or uh, uh, family injuries, uh, we can extend it. <coughs> the problem is that the article devoted to the uh, calculation of the amount to be due in cases of compensation of bodily injuries from 10% to 100% was not that, did not directly um, provided rules on that. But provided that, the Italian government had to elaborate the chart. It provides also that the compensation could be increased up to 30% to compensate the existential damages, beware. But the article before was existential and moral damages, 20%. Here is 30% only for existential damages. And because it, it provides that the compensation of moral arms, just to make things easier, should be taken into consideration by the charge under the reading of personalization of the damages. Beware that both articles never mention explicitly existential damages and moral damages. They always make reference to them using phrases that mention them without giving them the name that we normally use uh, when we talk with our colleagues about them. So what happened? Oh, sorry. So I made it. I made it. OK, thank you. Sorry for that. So what happened? In 20 years, the charge had never been enacted. 20 years. So we are still using the charts of Milano and the charts of Rome, depending what we like. Oh. Um, when I presented the, um, the idea to the paper, actually, the chart, the chart of the government was apparently on its way because the government had already enacted it. Uh, but the problem is the scheme was not approved by the state council. For a number of reasons, very, very serious reasons. The first uh, reason is that the Italian government enacted the charge without uh, talking. The, the charge was made, was written by the Ministry of Justice without talking to the Ministry of Health or to the other ministries in general. So uh, what was done was to presume, they send them the charts, and they presume that if he did, did not complain, it was fine. <laughs> the second problem was that uh, in, uh, 
for the state council. The state council is a second degree administrative tribunal in Italy, but it also as a uh, um, general uh, counseling um, purposes. Uh, so the second problem was that uh, there are the, all the data used were all data. So there was not a comparison with the current situation when the chart was not. And uh, the third problem was uh, that um, um, they, they apparently um, used, used, they apparently were largely influenced by insurance companies. So apparently the outcome of the, of the charts uh, will be a uh, lowering of the amount of damages compensated to the parties, to the injured parties. And um, the impression was that uh, the insurance companies uh, had a larger part in writing it than they should have. And so uh, everything will stop there. Uh, I don't know if they are going to write a new chart in a short time. I don't think so. So the conclusion is that in Italy, we are still using local tribunal charts. And uh, the amount of compensation largely depends uh, of the judge that is facing you on what the judge may think of you as a person, because we know that large judges are largely influenced by the case by case situation if you want to help in uh, assessing damages uh, by some stricter rules and um, that's it thank you <laughs> thank you for your time